Okay, and I just have to ask you, we, we've gotten into a bad habit of, of uh, the chair not announcing, and I'll just say that we're recording, um, but the chair has to announce that we're recording audio and video, so if you could do that before you, or when you call the meeting to order, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, good evening, and welcome to the Town Services and Outreach meeting for December 5th, Thursday. We are recording. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, extended by Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance or members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the meeting in real time via technological means. Uh, let's see. So I will go ahead and see if all can be heard and hear me. Um, I'll start with Dorothy. Dorothy Pam? Yes, I can. Okay. Andy Steinberg? Yes. And I know that Anna will not be with us today, um, but I think Shalini is trying her best. She's in India, but I know she will be trying her best to, to join us. So we'll see how that happens and so we can call the meeting to order as we do have a quorum. Uh, now, um, I'm sorry, I didn't ask. So we have a couple here. I know Kelly can hear us and Paul Bachman, can you hear us? Yes, we can. All right, hello. And honorary TSO member, uh, Assistant Superintendent Amy Rosecki, can you hear us as well? I can. Hello, Barbara. guys. Hi. So um, I'm actually with that I going to thank you again for spending more of your time with us and hand the floor over to you. Oh, real quickly, Kelly, I think you have a question. It's DPW Superintendent Amy Rosecki, if that's your question. I'm sorry, Kelly. I didn't notice your hand. I apologize. Oh. That's all right. I was just hoping, um, could you spell the last names of the members who are absent? Right I'll get now? those to you. I'll get those to you afterwards. They're on the site. Oh, great. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Athena. And I think Athena just uh, promoted me, by the way. I'm the uh, assistant superintendent. Did I not say that? You deserve a promotion. You know what? Everybody's a superintendent. You're all superintendent. <laughs> um, Anyway, um, I don't know Athena. Sorry, Kelly has her hand up again. Do we need to? No. Okay. Nope. <laughs> awesome. Um, Athena, do you have those bylaws to put up? That's what we're going over, correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. Bylaws. So I, I think you have that. I don't know if you want to share. Would you like to screen. begin? Sure. Would you like to begin with sewer or water? Um. I guess sewer because that's that's what we were talking about most recently. You got it. Okay, I be, 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 be right here. Uh, you're unmuted, Dorothy. Okay, all right. Although she put her hand up. I have a question before we begin, Dorothy. Um, yes, I was listening to finance and uh, they were talking about these regulations and there was a question as to whether we had ex the TSO had explored um, the insurance or either on fund individuals or on town. And the answer is yes, we had in detail and Paul had given us the numbers and it did not seem um, the amount that people could get from the private insurance was not very adequate. Um, um, compared to say that I had a 30,000 more or less cost on, on mine and my insurance did cover it. But the ones that um, uh, available now have gone down and I think they only go up to like 6,000 or 9,000 and the town one didn't do it. So I just want Andy to check with Paul because we did go over that in detail and decided that would not be an option. So that's that. Okay, thank you. And uh, I will hand the floor back over to Amy. I'm sorry, Amy, I have to interrupt you one more time. Shalini just joined, so we just need to note that she arrived at 7.05 oh, and confirm that she can hear and be heard. I'm sorry. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hi, Shalini. Thank you for joining us from India. Thank you. <laughs> 
All right. Um, so uh, the bylaws for the sewer use regulations, um, and I think this will be way less lively than our <laughs> sewer and water reg discussions. Um, yeah, I don't know if folks have questions. I mean, the reality is this just kind of lays out the framework for us to be able to have the regulations. And one of the things that you'll notice, we actually went back and forth with the lawyers a couple of times to figure out whether fines should be written in the bylaws or whether we could keep them as we were showing them in the regulations, just so that as, you know, as fees and as, you know, water rates and all that go up every year so that we don't have to change a bylaw. Instead, everything can be in the regulations. Um, and so um, the, lo the lawyer signed off that that's legal. Um, and so that's why you'll see on the front or on the upper part that all the violations and all basically everything associated with cost is going to be in the regs and not the bylaw. Um, but I feel like that's kind of the important part of it. I think there's there's some text in C, um, you know, that basically, what is it, town manager following consultation with um, the superintendent may propose to town council adoption or amendments to the regulations. Um, and then the town council will ultimately approve it. So it kind of just shows the pathway for if, you know, if we want to propose changes. Um, yeah, I don't know if folks have any questions on this, but I think it's pretty straightforward. I, I agree. I, um, I've also had the pleasure to go through this with um, in GOL as well. But were there any other questions or comments from anyone else? Yeah, I did. Uh, so let me move this so I can see Andy. Yeah, uh, I'm specifically looking at um, F. It's in both regulations. And it says, once adopted, such regulation and any amendments there too shall be published once in a newspaper, published in the town etc. I won't read the whole thing, but that if we're going to put the entire regulations that we just um, recommended from TSO into a newspaper publication, that's a pretty long publication and a pretty expensive proposition. So the question is, is that required and it's that they be published in their entirety and wouldn't just publishing notice that there are new regulations and the link that they can find them on the town website, would that suffice in order to make it a less costly enterprise? Do you want me to respond to this? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. And so this, this is somewhat like lawyer ease. Um, but ultimately what it's saying is that we have to post a notice that say that these rules and regulations are available for inspection um, at a town website and the public office. So it does have to be a short notification. We don't have to publish all of them. I understand where, you know, where you're coming from because of the language they use, but that second sentence tries to kind of clarify that. And this, this comes from a mass general law specific to sewer regulations, although ultimately we put this both in water and sewer, you know, to make them parallel, but there is a regulation that says that we have to post, for some reason, a notification that says that these, um, these are available or that these are changing and that you can view them at X location. And why does it say once uh, that such regulations and any amendments shall be published once the newspaper is opposed to notice of the regulations and amendments should be published at least once. That might, I don't know, Paul, if you have any, amp, that, that's somewhat the, the lawyers put yeah. that in. I, I, I'm, I'm okay with adjusting it, you know, I think, yeah, I think the second half of the sentence is a little clearer. I, I exactly see what you're saying, and I'm I'm open to that. Yeah, I, I think you're spot on, Andy, because if we had to publish these, it would be thousands and thousands of dollars to publish them in a newspaper. I think what it is is that there's a notice that the regulations have changed, but the language doesn't say that. And I think we want this bylaw to be 
And so we can review that language with the with the attorney. And, and it could be that notice of such regulations. Um, so, and I'm talking with the attorney tomorrow morning so I can check with them about that tomorrow. Okay. Okay, and yeah. I will not repeat that for the uh, water regulations since we covered it once. Okay. Yeah, it's my understanding that it's just a notification that's required and and I see I see where the murkiness is in the the um this text um th I think this does go on to a second page so I don't know if there's anything on the second page that um that we want to scan to or if there's any other questions on the first page here I think this is number H is the only other thing that if you guys wanted to talk about it. So what we're proposing is um, that the Department of Public Works superintendent or um, their designee, um, that basically that's like the enforcement authority of these regulations. And remember, in the regulations, there is the whole appeal process that goes through Paul. Um, but um, that's that's at least how we set it up. But certainly that's that's open for discussion. Or are we all set with this? <laughs> You're muted, Anika. Sorry, you talking while I'm talking while I'm muted all day. Uh, do you see what would you would you see um, either um, Amy or or Paul um, that may be um, a comp complicated with with this or um, do you do you see any any issues around it? No, I think what this gives the authority to the superintendent to take action, mm -hmm. and then there's an appeal process that's outlined in the regulation. So I think we need to be explicit about who can act, and that's what the bylaw does. Okay. All right. Thank you. I can't see everyone at once. I'm just checking. Were there any other questions or comments? No. Okay. Then we can throw up the water bylaws and see if there's anything that pops out on those. They're pretty much the same. They're they're pretty much the same. The only difference is, you know. Some of the references to the M, um, the Mass General Laws. There, it's a different chapter for all the water ones versus the. It's chapter forty and forty one mostly for water, and it's chapter eighty three for sewer. Um, so a couple of different references, but again, the same. You know, penalties are all over here. Um, you know, town manager and public works can propose any changes to town council, and then you guys go through your process if need be. Um, and then H again has the authority with um, the superintendent or their designee. So again, same comment on F as from the prior. Yep. Any other questions or comments? I don't see any. After all the time we spent, I'm so glad to see something go through yeah. quickly pretty... like this, because I know the regs were a much bigger <laughs> fish to fry. So thank you so much for all of your time and hard work. And Athena, your, I see your hand, Athena. So um, I, th I think we're in a kind of a funny situation because we have this outstanding question, but we're hoping to get this over to GOL for their review on the 4th so that it can move along. Um, so I suggest that the committee might um, recommend them pending a review by GOL, especially in concerning 
section F in the water and sewer regulations, if that would be okay to just recommend with that caveat, then I think we can move forward with them and they don't have to come back for another recommendation after the town attorney looks at them again. Okay, so would the would the motion be to rec that um, the TSO committee recommends that the town council adopt the water and sewer bylaws pending um, legal Sorry. review? Is that what it is? Or? Pending legal review of section F. Oh, legal review of section F. I think it's F in both. It's, it's, it's F in both the posting requirement. And I, I'm, I feel fairly confident that uh, GOL would look at that also. So I think it would be appropriate for them to, to take that up and answer that question in their committee. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. All right. Oh, were you, did you make the motion, Anika? I did. Okay. Do I need to repeat it? Yes, please. I okay. think you're your lead. Okay, so <laughs> the TSO committee recommends that the town council adopt the proposed water and sewer bylaws pending legal review of section F for both the water and sewer bylaws. Is that okay, Kelly? I'm gonna read it back and make sure I got it um, word for word correct. Um, so I have uh, committee member or committee chair Lopez moved uh, second by Steinberg, is that correct? Correct. Lopes, yes. Uh, yes, um, to recommend that the town council adopt the water and sewer bylaws pending legal review of section F. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being patient with us. Okay, so we'll uh, call it Dorothy. You're muted. Yes. Shalini. Yes. Andy. Yes. And I am a yes. So uh, that passes with uh, four and one absent. And with that, thank you so much, Amy, for all of oh, your- uh, Excuse me. Uh, yes. Before Amy goes, um, Dorothy asked a question at the beginning. And I was wondering if um, you wanted a response to it. Yeah, I think between Paul and I, we can talk a little bit about this if you guys want. Um, Paul, did you hear that? She was talking about the um, the different insurance. And I know um, FinCom is going to be looking at this again next week. Andrew actually prepared a little bit of a summary as we're getting into it, but we're getting um, prices from the insurance company on what it like we're getting answers basically on what they would cover and what it would cost if we went the you know insurance route to try and cover some of these. Um, that's as much as I remember of the question that you asked. But if I didn't answer all of them, no, that that's I, fine. It's just that it's I think it's fine for finance to make those final decisions. But they had asked if we had discussed it in TSO, and right. the answer kind of came out that we hadn't, but we did. It, we had really gone into it. It, Thank you. it relates to the rate that we would have to add to the um, sewer um, bills that had, because uh, when we move the responsibility for that portion of the sewer line that runs in the right of way from the um, homeowner customer to the town, that there's an expense which uh, Amy um, estimated for the committee and um, she and Sean had uh, determined an amount that would increase the bill, the, the sewer bills. And uh, 
it, what was uh, being discussed was insurance that, as I understand it, that the town would obtain that was sort of was um, protect the amount of loss that, or, or protect the amount of the expense that we would incur, and it might um, enable us to decrease the estimate on the um, increase in the bills. So that's what it was about. I think that was a topic for finance committee, but TSO had approved the regulations as it is. So the finance committee is looking at the implementation and the costs. So that's their purview. TSO had already acted on its purview. So that was all it was. Yeah. If I can add though, I think Dorothy, to your point, if I recall the sewer regs, you guys approved pending conversation by FinCom because you knew that that was an important component of the conversation. So. Okay. Okay. Any other questions, comments? No. Okay. So now thank you so much, Amy, as always, um, for being with us. And of course, you're welcome to stay. And if not, we wish you a great night. Thank and you. I think I, I heard that um with your next topic, I'm probably going to at least listen in and see if there's anything that I you got want me to weigh in on. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so with that, we will move on to the uh, <clears throat> proposed bylaw to significantly reduce waste by providing universal cu curbside compost. And we will uh, head, uh, hand the floor over to town manager Paul Bockelman. Uh, for his update, and then we'll follow with um, questions and comments. I do see that we have a sponsor, Jennifer Tubb. I'm not sure if Jennifer would like to join us in the room. That would be nice, Anika, if you could invite her. Okay. Thank you. Thank just you. because um, I'm a little jet lag. I just arrived. And so if <laughs> if need be, she can provide and of course Andy's here as well yeah and you have and then I do see that we have Barsa Dumont and Tracy with us hello and thank you for being with us this evening hi Jennifer okay so I'm hi. going to thank hand it over me. oh of course thank you for uh, being here so I'm handing this over to you Paul now yeah so just a couple updates so we have um as you know we we received we applied for and received the grant that allows us to hire um, a DEP um, consultant for about 80 hours, which is a limited amount of time, but she will help us do an RFQ, a request for qualifications that we will send out, um, see the interest in providing a universal um, service to the town. Um, we have, the superintendent and I have met with the uh, consultant and you know, we're moving forward on that. Um, I also wanna note that the council is and in, in part of their discussions about goals is in talking about whether this should be part of their goals or not. So you'll be making that decision in, in shortly. So that's where we are. Yeah, I just wanted to provide um, an update just because we had presented Andy and uh, Jennifer along with Alicia and I had presented a work plan for us. And now that we have Susan working with us and going through some of the questions there, I just wanted to give an update of where we, we I think, I don't know, what, where we are with the work plan. Um, since most of the questions on the work plan are really for the town staff along now working with Susan for them to provide and the big one being around the RFQ and what information we get from them. So um, I think that uh, it would be great, uh, you know, we did meet with Susan also, some of us had an opportunity to meet with Susan and uh, and so she's, we've sent her all our questions from the work plan. And then she's going to like create her own way of, uh, you know, moving forward and provide a work plan. And so at some point, Paul, I'm wondering if, you know, maybe uh, we can, once she is done with her planning, the TSO could get 
a sense of the timeline for the development of the RFQ because everything, a whole conversation in TSO and the finance committee is going to be dependent upon receiving that information in the RFQ. Yeah, so I'm going to, um, again, until the council says this is a priority, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're going to be limited in what we, we're, we, we will utilize Susan's time. Uh, mm -hmm. But taking this on as a major task is going to be pretty significant for town staff. So it's really important for the council to say, yes, we want to dedicate town staff to moving this forward. So in terms of what, what we and, and what my staff can do with, at DPW, uh, right now we are committed to uh, achieving the grant, which is what we did, and then moving it forward with Susan. And that's sort of where we are. Um, beyond that, I'm not prepared to make commitments of staff time. Paul, could I ask a follow-up question? So um, um, what I'm hearing you say, though, is that we will be going, regardless of town council vote, we're still going forward with the grant to do issue the RFQ, right? Yes, true. Okay, yeah, and that's fair, yeah. And the yeah. rest, of course, yeah, okay. And then I'm just in terms of for the committee, how important that RFQ is, I just wanted to draw upon some of the information that we're hoping to get because that's what will then allow the TSO to focus on the bylaw aspect of it. For example, what would be, you know, what would be considered compostable, whether it's going to use, include yard waste or not. And so whether there will be options around that to get a sense of what the costs might be. We're hoping that the collective bargaining is going to bring down uh, the cost but we don't know that till we hear from the haulers. So what is it going to cost the residents? What are the options going to be? Um, and what would the rollout look like then? Like Because we've been hearing at our district meeting, we heard from residents in condos and apartments also asking for this. So what would be the right um, roll out for that. So those are all the kinds of questions we can delve into once we have more information. And Paul, you have your hand up. Yeah, and I, I just wanted to clarify. So I'm not trying to be obstinate on time, but I think this committee has already experienced how much work it takes to put together new water and sewer bylaws and new water yeah. and sewer regulations. And it's extensive. You see how many nights uh, Amy has been here to go through this. And so if we're going to identify this as a priority for the town, there are going to be other things that our staff won't be able to do. They're already straight out on things. So that's why I'm saying, you know, we need to identify what is our priority as a town in terms of how we mm -hmm. allocate staff time. So I just, I, I, I'm not saying I, I approve or disapprove of this. This is what the yeah. council says we want to identify. But I just want to, you know, and we're going to have this conversation, I think, additionally throughout the year as council comes up with new initiatives about, you know, mm -hmm. we need this, we need that. And it's going to be like, okay, we're going to need more funding to do some of this stuff. And that's, if it's identified as a goal, then it, it gets built into the budget or given as an option for the budget for the council to consider. So that's why, and I, I felt like I was always being too negative on this, but it's not my intent. It's more about trying to be realistic about you know, Amy has 37 and a half hours to work for the town and she's got to run work, snowstorms and all kinds of stuff. And that's the same with Guilford. And we we feel like there's sometimes their, their time is elastic, but it's not. And so we have to be, I have to be realistic about what demands we put on our existing staff. Mm -hmm. I think I think we all uh, understand that there's a yeah. lot of priorities and, and goals and, you know, we have those of us that have our agendas and our and our passion and, and you, the staff, have to balance them all and make them work. So I think uh, that's understood and we're grateful for that. Um, so Jennifer. Thank you. So I really um, had a question just for Paul, you know, as we, you know, we're looking at the town manager goals. So since I think there's some concern that, you know, we're just studying this, you know, it hasn't, it has to go back to the council. It hasn't been um, adopted yet, but it's gonna, I think more than other um, motions maybe or proposed bylaws, it's gonna take a lot of staff time to get to the point where we go back to the council with a final 
or bylaw or program for them to pass. So what, so the studying, the work that has to be done would then have to be a, a part of the town manager's goals so that you can allocate time. So when, so what you're saying now is what we're committed to is through the consultant and she has 80 hours, so that might end maybe the end of February or March. I don't know if you have a. I, I don't know what the, her time frame is, but yeah. it, it would be enough to get us the RFQ and get that out on the streets and get information back. So that, that'll get us mm -hmm. through the first stage, I think. Right. So we get that back, and then if we wanted to, you know, go forward, if that's not in your goal, we'd almost have to wait till the next year. Yeah, I mean, I think you should say that you want to do it in the goals. I think if you want to do it. Well, I, I would agree. <laughs> Shana, your hand is still up. Yeah, so uh, just to put, and that was one of my questions to clarify from you, Paul, like knowing what the steps are, like the first step is we've already taken getting the grant and then uh, getting the RFQ across, getting that information. And the town council has already passed the uh, the motion for us Yes, so to investigate. So the based on the information we get from Susan and the staff, we have enough to then uh, look at you know what it's going to cost and all of those discussions. What might be different models for paid pay as you throw within, and then and then the finance committee has to look at what we then send to them, and then part of that also needs to include public forums like to share the information because we do, we want them to be part of this conversation like what are you willing to pay and it might one of the things one of the alternate is maybe your water and sewer bill goes up but that's because this is happening or do you prefer the trend like we need we don't know, none of us are coming in knowing what this is going to look like but we're just thinking through what are the different steps and so I just wanted to put it out that the public forums or discussions and getting their feedback is going to be an important piece of it. So then all of that will then go to the council, to the town council as a recommend, you know, as a recommendation. And, se and separately, I think the finance committee has to look at the financial implications of what that might look and they will send their own then recommendation to town council. And then we, you know, and, and 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 that will obviously include, you know, your feedback and resources and town staff and all of that. So does does that look like what we're doing here? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And just to end on a very positive note, I think just the fact that we're having these conversations and we're working with zero. I mean, zero waste has obviously been very active. I think they're volunteering their time to work with the staff, to work with the district counselors to start the education process. And I'm super excited about that because we're not talking in, you know, just about getting this bylaw passed. We're looking at this as a whole campaign of reducing waste in our town and making us all conscious. Like already this is impacting the our, my choices, just having these conversations, I'm becoming more aware. And so we're going to share with you all soon, uh, basically, to to present to the town staff some sort of a rollout for the five R's, you know, like the re rethink whether you want to buy, reuse, re uh, repurpose, recycle, and then refuse being composting part. So we're hoping to create like educational components, which maybe the district counselors can offer, like we would be happy in district five to like take some part of a meeting, even if it's 10, 15 minutes to roll out this education campaign and get people on board and excited and, and to start, you know, doing those things. So I'm really positive, you know, however long it takes to finally change and do what we're doing, but we're starting to take the steps um already so i just wanted to share that part and um anything else that you wanted to add jennifer well hang on andy has his hand up, yeah, so andy's we'll hand is andy. up. All right. yeah. that's okay you tell me if you want to keep going okay um no i th I, i've been uh i'm pleased that we were able to get the uh grant from dp to move to the uh, next stage and the development of an RFQ 
how it gets developed is going to actually, I think, provide some answers to some of the questions that we had because uh, there are a lot of things that we know, but I think that Susan in trying to form an RFQ is also going to be able to provide information as she does so about the feasibility of some of the things that have been advocated for by various parties and uh, what, what really is, is feasible. We know that a lot of good things are going in a lot of communities along these lines, but we really don't know how it would roll out under the unique circumstances that are Amherst because every town is unique. Um, my other comment is that uh, conversation has been had about zero waste Amherst. And I think that they're great partners, but we really have to define that partnership very clearly because um, they are an advocacy group and offer the potential of being a great support group. But um, an advocacy group is not a decision-making group with the responsibility that the council is a decision-making group. And uh, so we need to be very cautious about making sure that we have separated our roles. And I think that we are working on that process, but it's good for the committee to uh, be aware of that distinction. And uh, I think that's basically as much as I can say now, I've learned a lot and I'm looking forward to learning a lot more about what's involved with uh, this kind of an enterprise and whether this is feasible and uh, how, how we can make it most feasible and most effective. And uh, that's why I would hold off on actual drafting the bylaw until we learn a little bit more. I think that uh, I was uncomfortable with our beginning, but I thought it was necessary to at least throw something out as a bylaw, but there's always the danger of starting with the bylaw as opposed to starting with the concept and exploring the concept and then drafting the bylaw to be realistic to what's doable. And that's so ultimately the bylaw that we propose out of this committee is going to come from our process as we move down the line. So that was basically what I wanted to say. Thank you for those important thoughts and points. Uh, Jennifer. I, um, I don't want to take too much time because I actually have a question. So well, to Andy and Paul. So at what point would the finance committee start to look at this after the consultant has been working longer or I wasn't clear on no, I, you know, I what that time frame is? I don't think we have anything to talk to. We don't have, so it's way too pre, yeah. Way too many, yeah. Yeah. And the billing system, if we get to, you know, that point, that happens with staff, not with finance. It, there's it's, it's like who bills? That's the first question. Is it yeah. the vendor who's going to do, who's the, the awardee? Or is it the town? That will be part of what um, the consultant will do preparing the RFQ. Okay. Yeah. We'll find out how other communities do it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Shana? Yeah, and also at some point we want to also ask the Board of Health what is the role they want to play in. Um, I know they've made it clear they don't have the staff to write up the regulations, which is what I think the town staff with Susan and then TSO working along will do. But I think the Board of Health may still have a role to play in terms of, I don't know, and that's what to ask them, what is the role they want to play? So I think that um, be, would be an appropriate question at some point. Yeah. So right? the, the Board of Health licenses haulers in town. That's their responsibility. And they, and they establish the regulations for it. Uh -huh. So that's the board. That's not the council's re responsibility. It's the Board of Health's responsibility, the way I understand it. Okay, so we'll we'll get to that, I suppose, when we get to that. Okay, one other question I had. Uh, so even to the whole committee, if you have other questions, just keep sending them to one of us, maybe, and we can just make sure that we pass it on to Susan and the town staff. Is this that? Not to Susan directly, but to the town staff for Susan, right? 
And uh, also, Paul, I know I think you had mentioned to us this thing, and this is, I think, just for us uh, to have that awareness that you'd said that any company that the town contracts will also have to follow the fair wage bylaw and the laws that, so we just have to, keep, is that true? That's true, right? Like, there's yeah, no I way mean, out of that. If, if we do a, you know, if we do a procurement, we will put in, you know, you have to follow all the town's laws, all the state's laws. We always put that in and they, they have to pay okay. their taxes and all this. There's a number of things that they have to comply with. Right. So I just want to put that out there also, because that's another component that even though we have the collective bargaining, that's, I mean, it's just to put it out there, that's something we have, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I don't know if that's a saying or not, or I'm just sleep deprived. I haven't slept for 28 hours, so. <laughs> maybe a little of both. Um, what's that? I said maybe a little of both. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, okay. I did want to, while we still have Amy with us and 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 sponsors, I know, and thank you, Jennifer, for being with us, move on to public comment in the event that anyone has a comment about this subject. And if you do, please raise your hand. Okay. Seeing none, um, John, is your hand up again? <laughs> again, yeah, last question. Also, as we're thinking of rolling out the edu education plan, is that something we can send to, you know, we just want to be sensitive to everyone that the education is really in the spirit of education and it's not advocacy. And so, is that something we can send to the staff just to even keep them updated of this is what's happening or would that be cumbersome for the staff? I think receiving it is fine. If you're going to ask the CPOs or any staff to say, we need you to send this out or take action, that's a different, but I think they would appreciate, or I would appreciate seeing the education mm -hmm. material. That's, that's a useful thing. So we're kept up to speed. Okay. And I think one other thing that came from Susan actually was to get a survey out to get a sense of what uh, residents are paying as part of market research. So I think that's another thing that the zero waste might be able to organize. And then all the district counselors can send out a link if they want to gather that um, data. So we'll just keep you informed. That's all. About. Thank you. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank, thank you, Amy, you for staying for with us. And I, ah, I'll go back to the audience. <laughs> thank <laughs> you. Yes, feel free to join us or have a chance to go see, uh, visit the, the sip and shop that's going on as we speak. Yeah. Like, and can we also just thank, sorry, just thank Darcy for also being here and for all her support all through. And there was a list of resources that's shared in our share folder. Like if anyone wants to see all the steps that we've taken so far, some of the resources uh, that's also been provided by Darcy. And I looked through it. I think it's a very useful record of all the different resources. Nice. Thank you. As well as a presentation. So thank you for that. And, and you're right, Anika, the, the sip and stroll is jammed. The downtown is crazy tonight. And oh, my goodness. The, the Drake is popping with all these uh, makers in there. So Yeah, I yeah. bet. I bet. Thank you to for the Gabrielle and the bid for that. Thank you. Um, and let's see. So, all right. So, I we well, we did have comment just for this subject, and we can have uh, another one after. I suspect we do have a comment or two or someone here with us. But uh, with that, we will move on to the town manager appointments. Um, I'm not sure if everyone had a chance to look them over. If you have any questions? And um, Paul, if you would like to sure. share some words and thoughts. I'll, I'll go through them one by one. So the first one is the Board of Health. And this is, uh, I am Appointed Premalyn Nair up to your uh, appointment, your your approval. She is a has lived in Amherst for thirty years. Um, she's a nurse practitioner, has always wanted to get involved. Now that her kids are grown, this is a familiar story we hear. Now that my kids are grown, I'm I'm ready to give back. <laughs> um, she has worked at Smith College in Springfield at the Southwest Community Health Center for twenty years. 
Um, she's worked at other community health centers. Um, she's worked in uh, helping to resettle refugees. Uh, she has, uh, speaks uh, English, Spanish, and Malay. Um, and she and I, I made a mistake on her bio. It says that she serves on the board of directors of the UU Unitarian Universal Society. She corrected me. She formerly served on the board of directors. She asked me to correct that. So she's not okay. on the board now. Um, she since she's been in the health field as a nurse practitioner. Um, she's been, um, you know, she has very strong familiarity with um, COVID-19 and also brought up some other things that were uh, interesting that she noted uh, for our health director. She talked about triple E and other vector diseases that um, um, will that the Board of Health deals with on a regular basis. So, um, so and uh, she also identified uh, racism, systemic racism is something that she was very pleased that the Board of Health had recognized and that that was something that was near and dear to her heart as well. So very strong candidate. We had a really strong applicant pool, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, but again, I think this, this person brings the sort of characteristics that we'd like to see in the Board of Health, and we will have more vacancies coming up on the Board of Health come June. Hmm. Interesting. Andy? Yeah, I have a question about the process in general. Uh, what kind of effort is made in the selection process and in the uh, advertisement process to get a variety of backgrounds on the Board of Health, people who have, for example, environmental health and safety background or um, medical background or scientific background in relevant areas? Um, is there any effort made to make sure that there is a mix? Yeah, so when we have a vacancy, I talk to the director and sometimes the chair about what kinds, who's on now, right now, right now we definitely have a doctor on it, we have an um, environmental scientist on. Um, we lost John Tobiasen, who'd served for many years, but he's a water expert. Uh, so the, and we, uh, we have a community member who's the most recent appointee uh, who, more of a generalist. Um, and so uh, so I do we do look at especially on the board of health because their breadth of responsibility is so broad. Uh, we try to uh, expand it out with people. And I, I think what uh, Ms. Nair brings is her community health background, which we really didn't have previously. We had physicians and things like that, but we didn't have the community health orientation. Any other questions? Okay, and this is for both Athena and Kelly. Would it be helpful if we go through this and do the motions one by one as opposed to a giant? One by one would be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, definitely one by one. <laughs> you got it. You got it. And then once you meet uh, Anna, who will join us, uh, will give you a minute because she likes to do those monsters all at once. Okay, would someone, Shalini? Is it okay if I bow out? I'm really excited about the appointments and fully support them, but I think if it's okay, I will leave. Yeah, you seem like you need some rest and you deserve <laughs> yes. it. So glad you arrived safely and enjoy. Thank you. See you all soon. See you soon. Okay, so I will uh, move to recommend the town council approve the town manager appointment of Pamela Nara to the Board of Health as filed with the town clerk on December 12th, 2022, effective immediately for a term to expire June 30, 2025. Is there a second? I see you, but I don't hear you. I second it. Okay, thank you. All right, so we'll let's do the call. We, uh, Andy. Yes. Dorothy. Yes. And I am a yes. So that's uh, three yes and two absent. The next appointment is for the registrar of voters. This is a um, a committee that oversees elections and. Um, 
the uh, person I have appointed is Stephen George. Stephen, Mr. Uh, Professor George, whatever. Um, he had previously served on the Board of Health for six years, and so he was uh, cycling off of the Board of Health. Um, he has been an election worker, warden, multiple um, roles um, in, uh, in, in working on elections. He's very um, strong in terms of his knowledge about elections and also his commitment to the town and wanting to maintain fair elections um, and also very detail oriented. So I think he'll be a very strong addition to the registrar of voters. It's a committee of four uh, and the committee um, is divided between Democrats and Republicans and the town clerk is automatically a member of the board of, of the registrar of voters. So um, Stephen George is a resident of 23 Dana Street. Hmm. It was recommended by one of the parties. Party committees. We had appointed a member from the Democratic Party and that person was appointed and then declined to serve. So that opened it up to anybody. And so um, and he, and, um, Mr. George is a uh, Democrat. So we, we now will have two Democrats, one independent and one Republican on the committee. Mm -hmm. um, Anika, I would love to make the motion. I read through all of them, read their bios, but I don't have it in front of me. So um, okay. I could make a motion that we accept Stephen George uh, for the Registrar of Voters with a term to last until what? June 30th, 2025. What, June 30th? 2025. Okay, right, 2025. I think That's we capacity. normally uh, word it as uh, moving to recommend to the town council. Right, thank you. Uh, I'll, I can read it over just so Kelly can get it. Right. Unless you want to, unless you want to go ahead, Andy. No, why don't you do it and then let Dorothy make as to how it should be worded. And then if Dorothy wants to make the motion, mm -hmm. she should have the honor of doing so if she wants, I would think. Okay. So it was to it's to recommend the town council approve the town manager appointment of Stephen George as a registrar of voters as filed with the town clerk on December 12, 2022, effective immediately for a term to expire on June 30, 2025. Well, I can do most of it. Um, All right. I move to recommend to the town council the appointment to the appointment of the town manager appointment of Stephen George as registrar of voters filed by the town manager on uh, December 15th. Um, Feel free to just say so move Dorothy and, and we've got those words that okay, Anika so said moved. and we'll, we'll say thank you. Right, thank, thank you. And you. I'll second. Okay. And then we'll call it Andy. Yes. Dorothy. Yes. And I am a yes. So that is three yes and two absent. Great. So the next one is the Transportation Advisory Committee. This is one that we're sort of cleaning up a lot of the reappointments and appointing two new members. So the reappointments are Tracy Zafian and Marcus Smith and Kimberly Tremblay for different uh, Tracy and Marcus for terms ending June 30th, 2025 and Kim on June 30th, 2024. And they will continue to serve under this, uh, if you approve this. And then we have two new members, Tate Coleman, um, who is a graduate student at UMass, but actually had worked in transportation previously. Um, and uh, he chaired the Regional Transportation Advisory Committee in South Back Berkshire County. And he worked for the town of Great Barrington. Um, mm. and it has done uh, micro transit planning and all kinds of good stuff with the Berkshire Planning Commission, Regional Planning Commission, a uh, very strong candidate. And we're actually anxious to have him. He's been coming to their meetings regularly because of his interest. So this would formally appoint him to the committee. The other person is Joseph Fatteruso. Um, he is a researcher and has, been, has, has worked with uh, Amherst College and has working with a couple of professors on doing research for their books that they're working on. He has worked in, in, uh, in the legislative side for the city of New York and New York State. Um, you know, he's moved here recently, lives on McClellan Street, 
um, it was a young family, just sort of came forward, said, I want to um, serve on something I'm interested in, and have really strong research skills. Um, we interviewed him for a few different things and felt like this is a really good fit for him because of the work that TAC does. It does a lot of research and sort of consultation and things like that. And um, so in terms of the interview, Tracy Zappian uh, sat in on those with along with a member of the uh, Residence Advisory Committee. So we think those two um, young people will really help, help the TAC as well, so. Thank you. Dorothy? I just want to say that I'm really glad that we're going to have a really strong TAC. I know that we had some vacancies for a while. It sounds like wonderful uh, reappointments and new appointments. So I so move that we recommend that the TSO recommend these appointments to the town council. Can we second that, Athena? I second. Can, you can, we, can we use the words? Thanks. Okay. Uh, all right. Dorothy, do you mind if I use the words for you? Yes, please do. Okay. All right, to recommend the town council approve the following manager appointments to the transportation advisory committee as filed with the town clerk on December 12, 2022, effective immediately. For a term to expire on June 30, 2025, Tracy Zaffin reappointment, that's Z-A-F-I-A-N, and Marcus Smith reappointment. For a term to expire June 30, 2024, Kimberly Tremblay, T-R-E-M-B-L-A-Y, reappointment, Kate Coleman, and Joseph Petroso. I'm, excuse me, I'm sure I'm butchering this name. This is F-A-T-T-O-R-U-S-S-O. Thanks, Anika. I sent the motions to uh, Kelly ahead of time, so um, there's yeah, no need to fine. spell. Okay. Yeah, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much, okay, thank you. So that's that's been seconded, I, if I heard correctly. Yes. So we'll call it Andy. Yes. Dorothy. Yes. And I'm a yes, three yes, two absent, and I see Tracy is here, so Thank congratulations, Tracy, and thank you for your continued service. Yeah. The next one is the Human Rights Commission. There are three appointees. Uh, Ronnie Parker from 24 North Prospect Street, Tyler Matsuo, who's a student at Amherst College, and Laverne Kelly at 48 Greenwich Road. So Ms. Parker has um, brings a lot of experience working in women's rights. Um, as a graduate student, it was one of her specialties. Um, she also brings language diversity that we're always trying to, to achieve because she speaks English, French, and Tamil, Tamil, mm -hmm. Tamil. Um, and I think many of you know her, and, and she's a passionate uh, person who's, uh, who cares about human rights issues, and so uh, and has has been very um, interested in serving on this. The second one person is Kyler Masuo, who is a um, student at Amherst College. Um, again, speaks English, French, and Japanese. Um, and, you know, he is, uh, we're always trying to engage uh, students in terms of being involved, especially on the Human Rights Commission. Um, he won't, you know, we'll, I'm pointing him to a um, two-year term because that's at the end of his two-year term is when he will graduate from Amherst College. So we'd like to take advantage of his experience and his interest in this. Um, he's uh, a very a critical thinker and in, interested in, in law and jurisprudence. Um, and so um, that's our second person. And then Laverne Kelly, who is a who grew up in Amherst and um, has worked as a legislative aide. Um, she serves on the executive board of Women of Color Health Equity Collective, which is in Springfield. And, um, and she is very much aligned with the mission of the um, Human Rights Commission. So those are the three appointees. I see my excellent additions. Dorothy. I'll just say excellent additions too, and let you make them up the, read the words. Okay. I'm I just don't wondering. move. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One quick question before the words. Um, 
Paul, is this the first time that um, a, 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 an Amherst UMass or Hampshire College student has served on one of the committees? No, we've had Amherst College students before. I don't think we've had Hampshire College students. We have high school students who serve on the Human Rights right. Commission. Oh, OK, um, that's great. It is good. That's great. OK. And we have high school students on the Cultural Council. I think it's mm -hmm. Cultural Council or Public Art Commission. I forget which yeah. one. It's great to add the, the youth, their voices and vision. Mm -hmm. All right, for the words to recommend the town council approve the following town manager appointments to the Human Rights Commission as filed with town, the town clerk on December 12th, 2022, effective immediately <clears throat> for a term to expire June 30, 2025, Rainey Parker, for a term to expire June 30, 2024, Tyler Mutsu, for a term to expire June 30, 2023, Laverne Kelly. It's been moved. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Can I do that? I'll second. All right, we'll call it Dorothy. Yes. Andy. Yes. And I am a yes. So that is three yes and two absent. Thank you. Um, Thank you. A follow up on that is the uh, student who served on the um, Cultural Council actually from Amherst College wrote an article in the Amherst student and that generated a lot of a few other uh, students to apply mm -hmm. based on what ah. he wrote about his experience serving on, mm -hmm. on a committee and they said, oh, I didn't know this was open to me. So let me try. Yeah. So that was yeah. kind of exciting. Um, That's great. Yeah. And the last one is the Recreation Commission. Uh, Sarah Ewell of 15 Blue Hills Road. Um, is grew up here and has been participating in sports both as a uh, as a as a as growing up uh, as a as a college athlete and then also as a parent. Um, and she it was is, again ready to start giving back to the community and expressed interest. And so I think she's going to be a very strong addition to the recreation commission. All right. Thank That's you. It. Okay. Well, I could, I could, I could strongly support and say I so move. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. We're partners here. I will. I'll come with the words. Okay. So we are. Let's see. Move to recommend the town council approve the town manager appointment of Sarah Sarah Ewell to the Recreation Commission as filed with the town clerk on December 12, 2022, effective immediately for a term to expire on June 30, 2025. Great. Dorothy's made the motion that I second it. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll call it again. Andy. Yes. Dorothy. Yes. And I am a yes. Okay, so that is, th again, three yes and two absent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really great candidates, Paul. Really yeah. good job, everybody. Yeah, They're, yeah, it's really exciting when we have strong people. Yeah, and I love the fact that you have two, two members going to the Human Rights Commission that each speak three languages. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's really important. Okay, making progress. And uh, so next, I'm not sure, has everyone had a chance? I know that we have two of us who are not here um, to look at the, thank you. Wow. Uh, who are ahead of, uh, your, whoever is far ahead of us, appreciate it to look at the upcoming, the schedule, our meeting schedule for this coming year. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Athena, for matching the holiday dates and getting us again. So we are hopefully opposite of um, CRC. Mm, okay. So my question was the explaining the ones where it's this or it's that, and it's this or it's that. Um, I just wanted to know what that was about. 
Um, I think some of the, some of those dates, there were some back to back meeting dates like CRC had back to back meeting dates for one reason or another. And so in order to avoid CRC mm -hmm. cross, um, you know, double booking, <laughs> mm -hmm. there were some different options about how you wanted to break these up. So, um, and that's what I've done. And then there was, um, I looked at last year's schedule. I think you had either one meeting in July or August. So if you wanted to, you know, I, so that, that's why I get, I left some options to see if the mm -hmm. committee had a preference. Um, but I also wanted to note that the, the town council president is going to make new committee appointments at the beginning of this coming year um, in January. So this schedule, just as a reminder, um, is subject to change pending the new committee members. It's just good to have a jumping off point mm -hmm. for TSO once um, the new committee is formed, if there are new members, um, and it might be amended depending on their schedule and availability, but it's just nice to have some dates on the books. Right, which I didn't think about when I entered them all into my date books. <laughs> but I noticed that it says all the meetings at 6.30 and we've been meeting at 7.00. Well, we meet at seven if we like, for instance, if we, we fit in this meeting, we have Athena or you know someone else, a Shalini oftentimes coming from CRC. Mm -hmm. But usually our regular time was, has been 6.30. Okay. I should note that the problem with 6.30 is uh, that uh, I'm liaison to Transportation Advisory Committee and we try and have one member of TSO serve in that role and uh, there's a conflict because uh, TAC normally meets on the same Thursday, ends up meeting on a lot of the same Thursdays at um, 5.30 and when we have a 6.30 meeting, uh, mm -hmm. it's guaranteed that uh, I have to leave the meeting, the tech meeting early. So would, would the seven start time, I mean, assuming that I mean, it, it might not be us here, but assuming that, that would 7 p.m. be a better start time for you? Uh, yeah. I think yes, unless we can coordinate something different with uh, TAC. Uh, if Tracy's still in the audience, she might be able to comment she's, on that. No, she's not here. She's left. Or... I mean, this would it be more appropriate? Because I believe that we have one more meeting if we take a look at this and then mm -hmm. put this just to take a look at this for the the next meeting again, assuming that it is here. But it seems that that would that would um, that would make sense anyway for whomever. I had my hand up, but sorry, Dorothy. Go ahead. Whoever is on what committee, whoever is a liaison, uh, TAC has so many items that relate to TSO. I think it's really important that we try not to conflict with the TAC hours. Yeah. This is really useful. Um, Andy's been a useful liaison. Yeah. So I, I mean, it, so this it seems like it would be safe to just switch the timing from seven, seven to nine, as opposed to six thirty to eight thirty. Good. So would you like me to make that change now or do you want to come back, uh, bring this calendar back to the next meeting and. I, I think it makes sense. So I put it as to, you know, with uh, Andy's point to change it now for whomever. And, you know, if there is, you know, some, some issue that needs to be changed at a later date, it can be. The other thing is I could inquire with TAC as to other it's um, frozen into those dates and can't move the dates or the time. It would be hard for them to imagine moving the time because I think that five o'clock infringes on the work hours of members of that committee. Mm -hmm. uh, today they met, didn't meet until six. It was a little easier because they had a important but briefer agenda. I'll comment on later. Okay, so I think we've gone about as far as we can with this for this evening. 
And thank you, Kelly and Athena, Kelly and Athena, for pulling this up and for your work and helping us out with this. This has been very helpful. You're welcome. And so you'd like to leave this as is now and, and try and approve at the next meeting? Is that what? You... Yes, I think so. And we have okay. the evidence with us. Okay, great. All right, so I see that we have one, someone who has joined us. I just see a phone number and I'll ask again at this time if there is any public comment. If we have any public comment, please raise your hand. Okay, moving along, next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes as everyone had a chance to take a look at the minutes from November 10th for our regular meeting schedule. Were there any uh, questions, concerns? Okay. I will move that uh, we approve the minutes from November 10th, 2022. Is there a second? I'll a second. second, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'll call it Dorothy. Yes. Andy? Yes. And I'm a yes, so that's three yes and uh, two absent. And... Uh, Let's see, are there any announcements, any goings on that anyone has um, heard about that they would like to share? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I said a moment ago about uh, today's TAC meeting and uh, let's see if I can uh, share screen and find that document there or not. Um, I'm not going to bother to try. I'm just going to tell you what's on it instead because I don't want to mess around too long. Um, they had a really good discussion about TAC priorities and items in progress. And um, I thought it was a very good discussion uh, because they not only presented what they were talking about, but um, they had Jason Skeels present from DPW, and Jason was very good at answering a lot of questions that are there. So I just wanted to share with you what the items were without getting into discussion, unless you ask. But um, the uh, priorities and items in progress that they talked about were um, completion of the priority um, bicycle and pedestrian networks map. A number of members of that committee are very focused on uh, mm -hmm. bicycle safety and pedestrian safety, and they have been working on that issue. Um, that uh, They pointed out that there were two items that had been forwarded to them for consideration, and they've made a tremendous amount of progress that they reported about on crossword design guidelines and uh, I think that that's one that may be coming back to our committee at some point because I think that they are looking eventually to get the council to adopt the guidelines so that they have more formal uh, imprimatur than they presently have. So we may be hearing about that one again. Um, they uh, talked about uh, Restriction of uh, on-street parking on arterial roadways, which is something we've had some familiarity with. Um, they've talked about um, having, um, let's see if I can get, um, that there was one carryover item for TAC from the previous council. And that was one that um, I recall there was a lot of discussion about, which is, um, a redesign of uh, the walkways and um, pedestrian access along North Pleasant Street between Eastman Lane, which is sort of the north end of the main part of campus where that roundabout is up to Pine Street. And uh, the prior uh, TAS, uh, prior TSO, it's been some time um, at the urging of DPW 
uh, to work on that issue and clear in their proposed design. But because of budget reasons, the work, the funds weren't available, going to be available um, to work on to actually do the work. So it kind of got backed away. But it, it was something that was lurking from the last council. And uh, then they uh, talked about, they asked about a number of streets, um, what the, uh, that are priority road projects and corridors for infrastructure improvements. And that's where Jason was really good at uh, jumping in and uh, giving reports on those items. So that, that was the, the discussion today. Um, and uh, I thought that they had a really good discussion in all items. Yeah. Thank you. Very interesting. Dorothy. Um, I got a letter from a constituent, uh, dear Pam, which some people call me or confuse me with Pam Rooney, not sure, from District 4, which we are straddling two districts. Um, so I sent a copy to Pam Rooney and to Jennifer Taub and to Tracy Zafrian. It was about uh, who's in charge of plowing. And she listed a lot of streets, Strong Street and a number of other streets. And I think CRC had been actually having a discussion of that. So it was very timely. And um, a lot of people are looking into that um, as to what the, uh, you know, working on that. And I think this is something that just ties in with all of the things we've been talking about. Uh, pedestrian safety and um, just clarifying who's to do what and when and how that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. That was actually a topic and of uh, this week's GOL meeting um, going over that and and uh, we actually for district four that we'll uh, share more in a couple of days that we have a walk um, that we're going to start walking some of the uh, sidewalks mm -hmm. and uh, that Paul will be joining us. It's fantastic. So we're going to um, start mm -hmm. this to see how we can uh, be helpful to the town and initiatives that are already taking place. Um, I have a couple of lighthearted uh, shares. One, I just, I saw this today and I thought this was so sweet that on um, December 21st, there will be a winter solstice celebration at Kendrick Park. Um, with lots to do for, you know, kids and stories about darkness and, and light. And um, I just thought that was so great. The, you know, the, the solstice are often um, celebrated um, in a major way in Indigenous culture. And I, I think that's so great how that's going on here. Um, and I also had last week, I went to uh, Amherst College for their astronomy night, which was really great. I mean, the way that the students were out and full force. And it was just, it was really nice to see the Amherst College students interacting with, um, you know, local youth. And they they had so much going on. They had different exhibits and uh, portable planetariums and um, some great um, telescopes on, on the roof that I was so excited about. I ended up catching the attention from uh, Counselor Haneke's husband, who I had never met before, but he just heard our, you know, squeals about what we were looking at um, through the telescopes and was kind enough to move some so we could um, see some more planets and, and uh, mm. constellations, so. Um, that was that was really great, and I know that they will. Um, you know, hopefully, they. I talked with some of the students, and they are really excited about it, and you know, to continue on um, with these events. So um, that was that was a lot of fun. So that was pretty much. Oh, oh, and I also I attended the, and I'm not sure who else stopped by the the holiday party for the Chamber of Commerce that was at the Eric Carlisle Museum. And that was my first time going there. And they have two really great um, exhibits over there. So that was that was great as well. And I'm sure you all have been, but I'd recommend it for anyone who hasn't. And that's about it for uh, for mine. And we will, um, you know, for our, our next agenda, we'll continue on with uh, the schedule, probably more of street lights and um, speed limits, perhaps. And then we will also talk about upcoming agendas. And Athena, I see your hand. Yeah, I just wanted to note that we have the surveillance use policy on the council agenda for Monday. And I think we anticipate that that will come to TSO for review prior to uh, council action. So that oh, I think is on consent for 
um, a TSO referral on Monday. Great. Mm -hmm. That's great. And I, think uh, I have a question about that astronomy night. Sounds fabulous. It was. Um, what young people were invited? Because uh, I never saw anything about this in, a, in the paper or anything. You know, that was something because I actually I saw it on um, social media and I, and I shared and shared away. Uh, but it was, I know that the, um, the, the school system, the I think it was the high school, middle school, they had shared it. And that's where I um, initially saw it. But it was, I definitely, I saw it on um, social media. I'd imagine it was on their websites. But um, yeah, I did ask and put, gave my input because I think there were a lot of people who didn't know and found out, mm -hmm. you know, a uh, later minute and probably would have gone ahead of time. Yeah. And, you know, it was nice because it was, you know, I mean, you you had a lot of kids there, but just the space that they had it in, it's nice and uh, spread out partially um, outdoors as well. Uh, mm -hmm. So it was nice that it was in such a big space. You could accommodate people. And there were a lot of people there, but it wasn't too packed. Yeah. Well, it just sounds wonderful. I yeah, know. they they were motivated. The students were saying how, you know, apparently they had planned this and then COVID happened. Uh, mm. So they're really excited to get going with it and in other ways that they can invite the community into that mm -hmm. space. Yeah, new leaf, new leaf. Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely forward because I have a mailing list, so I'll I'll forward it to to everyone. I guess you know, Thank to you. sign up, then you would have those um, alerts. Thank you so much. All right, and with that, we have yeah. So we do not have any. Um, items that were not anticipated within 48 hours. So um, I won't wish you all happy holidays yet because I do not think any start before our next meeting. And oh. I'll see you then. And if there's nothing else. Um, uh, I think I want to know, I had written down two dates for the next meeting and it's not on the new list. So what is, I don't are think, the, maybe it is. The 22nd, I think that's it for me. Yeah, the, the 22nd, 6.30. Okay, yeah, I did not have it. Thank you. I know that's a popular day. Good. 6.30. Oh. So will there be items for the council, for the committee to consider on the 22nd? I wonder if you need to have that meeting since you just meet met tonight. I I mean, I, I don't know that there are any that we'd have to meet beforehand unless if I can ask Athena, was there anything that was coming back to us for the water and sewer bylaw to pass on or will this go we we've already settled it. I know we voted it through so we we have nothing else to do and it will go on just a GOL. Yep. It's it's also I've already actually uh, forwarded it over to Michelle um for GOL okay. with that caveat Thank you. For that. That, Thank you. That the attorney look at that section F on both of them. So yep, those are all set. Would you agree that we could postpone? Me, I would love if we didn't have a meeting on the 27th. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's good with me. What do you think, Andy? I agree. All right, we're done here. So totally. I wish it's, you it's, the it's, happiest holidays. <laughs> if I see you on Monday. Monday. And one of my grandchildren's coming home. So yeah, I don't I'd love not having That's a meeting. meeting. Oh, yes. Okay. So I'm not wishing you anything. I'll see you all. Okay. <laughs> it's on Monday the 19th. <laughs> okay. Thank, Thank you, you all. all. Thank you. With me and have a wonderful night. Meeting adjourned. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Kelly.